Intel just released some more information on their new Thunderbolt 4 standard. So if you're trying to figure out the difference between Thunderbolt 3, Thunderbolt 4, and of course, USB 4, this video is for you. And at the end, I'll also talk about Apple and how their new ARM-based Macs will play into this. And by the way, our new premium Apple product hoodie is incredibly soft, and you can find it in our merch shelf just below this video. The first thing to know about Thunderbolt 4 is that it uses the same exact design as it did before. So just by looking at the port, you won't be able to tell the difference between a regular USB-C port, a new USB 4 port, or a Thunderbolt 4 port. So you'll have to rely on looking up the specs of the computer or the laptop that you're buying to know for sure which port it is. Now before I get into the specs of Thunderbolt 4, let me first explain what USB-C is and how it compares to the current Thunderbolt Thunderbolt 3. If you already know all of that, you can skip ahead to this section of the video. The USB Type-C connector is basically the solution to the flawed design of the USB-A connector, which is known for being super annoying since you have to plug something in using the correct orientation. With USB-C, it doesn't matter which way you plug it in since the connectors are in the center, so it works every time. Now digging deeper into USB-C, there are actually different transfer speeds that are supported with really confusing names that were recently updated for the second time, and ironically, they're still confusing. There's USB 3.2 Gen 1, which supports a maximum speed of 5 gigabits per second. There's 3.2 Gen 2, which goes up to 10 gigabits per second, and there's 3.2 Gen 2x2, which goes up to 20 gigabits per second. And the only way to know the difference is to check the specs of your computer. But the great thing about USB Type-C is that it allows up to 100 watts of power to be transferred from one device to another, compared to only 7.5 watts using the old square USB Type-A connector. And that's the reason why Apple's 18 watt fast charging brick uses USB-C. Now this is where Thunderbolt 3 comes in. It uses the same Type-C connector and it supports USB-C devices, but it also supports speeds of up to 40 gigabits per second. Not only that, but it's made to support more protocols like DisplayPort by using an adapter and PCI Express for handling data transfer between computers and things like eGPUs. And because of its high 40 gigabit per second bandwidth, it's able to power high resolution displays like two 4K displays, a single 5K display, or even Apple 6K Pro Display XDR by using a new version of display stream compression that squeezes all of those pixels into a less than 40 gigabit per second stream. And it can even be used to daisy chain multiple monitors or devices together and ultimately end up with just one cable being plugged into your computer. But keep in mind that there are some Thunderbolt 3 cables that only support 20 gigabit per second speeds, so it's very important to buy the right cable if you want the full 40 gig speed. And one more important thing to know about Thunderbolt 3 is that it almost always requires an Intel-made Thunderbolt 3 controller chip inside of the computer or laptop to support it. So every time you see a laptop with Thunderbolt 3 ports, they had to buy that chip from Intel and integrate it into their laptop. And on the other side, a device like an SSD that supports Thunderbolt 3 also needs a controller chip certified by Intel, which obviously isn't free. So that's why you don't see very many Thunderbolt 3 devices, at least not cheap ones. And those Thunderbolt 3 controller chips that I mentioned can support up to two full speed Thunderbolt 3 ports. So for example, with Apple's 16 inch MacBook Pro, which has four Thunderbolt 3 ports, it actually uses two separate Intel controller chips to support them. However, with Intel's newest mobile Ice Lake processors, they're finally integrating Thunderbolt 3 into the processor itself, no longer requiring an external Thunderbolt 3 controller chip. And now with all of that out of the way, we can move on to USB 4 before we finish off with Thunderbolt 4. On March 4th of 2019, Intel released the Thunderbolt 3 specification, finally making it royalty free to be used to form USB 4, which uses the same Type-C connector, except that it no longer requires an Intel Thunderbolt controller or Intel certification. This ultimately means that we should see USB 4 ports coming to basically every computer and laptop very soon. But the beauty of USB 4 is that it supports the same 
40 gigabit per second speed as Thunderbolt 3, so you could potentially use a USB 4 port in the future to connect a 6K display. And to make it even better, USB 4 can support everything that Thunderbolt 3 supports, including DisplayPort and even PCI Express tunneling to use with an eGPU. And since it no longer requires a Thunderbolt controller chip, high-end devices like eGPUs are going to become cheaper and more widely available than ever before. But another important detail to know is that not all USB 4 ports and cables will be the same, since Intel is only requiring USB 4 cables to support a single 4K display, a minimum of 10 gigabits per second speed, and only 7.5 watts of power delivery, so be sure to buy the correct cable. But basically, USB 4 is the dream. You get support for very high 40 gigabit per second data transfer speeds, and support for DisplayPort and PCI Express connections but while being completely royalty free and no longer requiring an Intel controller chip. Now let's finally move on to Thunderbolt 4. And the most surprising thing is that the maximum speed stays the same at up to 40 gigabits per second, but it still requires a Thunderbolt 4 controller chip and Intel certification, so it doesn't seem like a very good deal. It seems like most of the changes are oriented towards quality control. So let's take a look at a handy chart made by Intel. Starting from the top, Intel is requiring Thunderbolt 4 cables to support the full 40 gigabit per second speeds, so you no longer have to worry about buying the wrong cable on accident. Thunderbolt 4 accessories like docks can now finally have up to four ports. On top of that, Intel is also requiring Thunderbolt 4 cables to support two 4K displays or one 8K display, support power delivery charging, support wake from sleep when using a Thunderbolt dock, support Intel VTD DMA protection, and support full PCI Express 32 gigabit per second transfer speeds. And that's basically it. The only real new feature is finally getting four Thunderbolt ports on a dock. Other than that, Intel is simply requiring every Thunderbolt 4 cable and device to support a higher standard of speeds and display support, so you won't get screwed by buying a cheap cable. And Intel also announced that their Tiger Lake line of CPUs will soon be the first to integrate Thunderbolt 4 and therefore not requiring a controller chip. But to be completely honest, all of those changes don't really matter to me or regular consumers like me, so I'm finding it hard to believe that manufacturers are going to jump to support Thunderbolt 4 since the minimum requirements went up, making cables more expensive to produce. And now let's finally finish off with what Apple is going to do now that they're ditching Intel chips and using their ARM-based chips, which will no longer support Thunderbolt. Wait, stop, that's totally wrong, future Vadim right here, and as we were editing the video, Apple just sent a statement to Apple Insider saying that Apple Silicon Macs are going to continue to support Thunderbolt despite the switch to ARM, so basically that answers the question. So there you guys have it. Hopefully you learned something new in this video, and if you did, click that circle above and check out our Apple product merch right below this video. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.